Here's just a quick tutorial on some of the logarithm rules. So I'm going to go over three rules with you. I'm going to go over the power law of logarithms, product law of logarithms, and quotient law of logarithms. It shouldn't take long. I'll just quickly show you each of the rules and then one example for each. So power law of logarithms. What that tells us is if we have a log of a power, right? So we're taking the log of this power x to the n. What we're allowed to do, we're actually allowed to take the exponent of the argument, so this n, and rewrite it as the coefficient of the log. So this actually equals n multiplied by log base b of just x. So the power of the argument, so the exponent of the argument can be written as the coefficient of the log. So if we look at this example down here, we're allowed to, we're allowed to take this exponent of 5, right? That's the exponent on the argument. We're allowed to take that exponent of 5, rewrite it as the coefficient of the log. So this is equal to 5 times log base 2 of 8. And then I could evaluate this, right? We remember what a log means. If you don't remember what a logarithm is, you should go back and watch my previous video. I'll put the link in the description. Uh, but what we want to do is evaluate what is log base 2 of 8. So we're looking for what exponent would I put on 2 to get 8. That's what this means. Well, 2 cubed is 8, so I know log base 2 of 8 is 3. So 5 times 3, 15. And let me remind you, if you weren't able to tell what exponent goes on to to get 8, if you weren't able to tell that it's 3, right, 2, two cubed is 8, let me show you how you can get your calculator to tell you that. So we would input on your calculator log base 2 of 8. It'll give you 3. If you don't have that change of base option on your calculator, you can use the change of base formula, which I showed in my previous video as well which would tell us we can change them both to, lo to, to logs base 10 and divide them. So log of 8 divided by log of 2 will give me the same answer. It'll give me 3. It'll tell me the exponent that goes on 2 to get 8. So that's the power law. Let's look at the product law. The product law tells us if we have two logarithms being added, so the two logs are being added, where they have the exact same base, so I have a log base b of m plus a log base b of n. So two logs being added that have the same base. We're allowed to write these as a single logarithm, keeping that same base, so keep that base b, and then multiply the arguments. So m times n would be my new argument. So we can combine those two logarithms into a single logarithm by multiplying the arguments. So let's look how this works. So I have two logs being added that have the same base. They're both base 8. So I can write them as a single log, keeping that base, keep the base 8, but then multiply the arguments. So 4 times 16. Let's evaluate this. So log base 8 of 64. So we're looking for what exponent goes on 8 to get 64. That's, what, that's how we would interpret this logarithm. We're looking for what exponent goes on 8 to get 64. Well, 8 squared is 64, so the answer to that logarithm is 2. And once again, you could type on your calculator log 64 over log 8. It'll tell you the answer is 2. Let's look quickly at the quotient law. So it's very similar to the product law, except this time the logs are being subtracted. So if you have two logs that are being subtracted and they have the exact same base, we're allowed to combine them as a single logarithm with the exact same base with the arguments this time being divided. So let's see how that works. I've got a log base 3 of 405 minus a log base 3 of 5. So I'm allowed to combine these as a single logarithm with that same base, 3, but I now need to divide the arguments. So this equals log base 3 of 405 divided by 5 is 81. Now this logarithmic expression means what exponent should I put on 3 to get 81? Well, 3 to, uh, 3 to the 4 is 81, so the answer is 4. All right, 3 to the power of 4 is 81. That's why the answer to this logarithm is 4. And you could type down your calculator log 81 divided by log 3, and it'll tell you the answer is 4. Okay, so those are the three main log rules. What I'm going to show you now is maybe a question that combines um, all of these.
So let's look at this question. We'll do this last example, and then that'll be it. So if we can do this example, then you can be confident that you know all of the log rules. So for this one, actually, I'm going to solve this one two ways. First way, uh, I'm going to start by uh, taking these radical expressions, rewriting the square root symbols as um, rational exponents. So uh, the square root of x cubed, I can rewrite that. Remember, uh, a square root means exponent of a half. So this would be x to the half to the 3, which I'll write that as 3 over 2, plus log of x squared. Uh, actually, let me remove this dividing line because I'm going to split into two different ways after this line. And the last one here, minus log of x to the half. Right, Square root means exponent of a half. Uh, so I have two options here. This is where I'm going to split it into my two options. I could use my product and quotient rules. I can combine these, write them as a single log. Right, They're all log base 10. They're all common logarithms. If you don't see a base, the base is 10. So they all have the same base. So what I can do is I can write them as a single logarithm. Uh, the first two are being added, so I need to find the product of x to the 3 over 2 and x squared. So multiply those arguments. But then I'm subtracting this log. So I need to, in my argument, divide by this argument, x to the half. And then if I want to simplify this, I need to use my exponent laws. So when two variables are being multiplied, so two hours are being multiplied that have the same base, you add the exponents. So I'll have to do 3 over 2 plus 2, 3 over 2 plus 2, right? 2, uh, I'm going to need a common denominator. So 2 over 1 written with a denominator of 2 would be 4 over 2. So really this is 3 over 2 plus 4 over 2, so that's 7 over 2. So in my numerator, I have x to the 7 over 2. Denominator is x to the 1 over 2. So now when powers are being divided with the same base, you keep the base the same and you subtract the exponents. 7 over 2 minus 1 over 2 is 6 over 2. And 6 divided by 2 is 3, so x to the 3. And if I wanted to, I could use my power law and rewrite this exponent. Right, I'm allowed to take the exponent of the argument, write it as the coefficient. So this equals 3 log of x. So that's my simplified expression of this up here using all of the rules. So I used my product law, my quotient law, and then at the end here I used the power law. Let me show you how else we could have done this. I could have used my power law right away. I could have moved this 3 over 2 to the coefficient. So I could have written this as 3 over 2 log x plus power law here, so 2 log x, and power law again, so minus a half log x. And now what I have, I have three terms, and they all have a log x. Log x, log x, log x. So if I have uh, different terms that have the exact same logarithmic expression, meaning they have the same base and same argument, we'd say those are like terms. And when collecting like terms, all you have to do is add and subtract the coefficients. So I have to do 3 over 2 plus 2. And remember I told you 2. We could rewrite that as 4 over 2. So I have 3 over 2 plus 4 over 2 minus 1 over 2. 3 over 2 plus 4 over 2 is 7 over 2. Minus 1 over 2 is 6 over 2. So 6 over 2 log x, which is 3 log x. Same answer either way. Think of it as collecting like terms by doing your power law first, or use your product and quotient laws, and then use your power law at the end. Either way will get you the same answer. Okay, so I hope that helped. I hope you feel confident with our three laws, power law, product law, quotient law. And I've just put a summary here of probably any of the rules you would need for logarithms. Feel free to pause the video and look at all of these rules. Uh, if you want any supporting materials, make sure you go to jensenmath.ca, and make sure you subscribe and like, and you'll stay up to date with any new videos I post.